Joseph is sitting there. He's weeping. He's shaking. He's touched heaven. The atmosphere is different. Prayer changes the very atmosphere of your home. It'll change the atmosphere of your job. It'll change the atmosphere. Oh, I still believe in walking around things. I believe the children of Israel can do it around the wall. Why can't we do it? Hallelujah. Around our business. Why can't we do it around our church property? Why can't we take drastic measures again? In the church, we'll take drastic measures again. We will see the hand of God. He will move. Isaiah walked in and said, Has changed his mind. I see he has a guy go, Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Breaks out into a dance. He said, God said, You're going to live and not die. Amen. Imagine that. An hour ago, he's going to die. All of a sudden, you are healed. Yeah. What changed it? Prayer. Amen. Said to the disciples, Go to the upper room. Wait for me. Wait, expect. While they were there, they were expecting something. I'm expecting something. Your pastors are expecting something. I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm telling you, God is up to something. And I believe that there is a revival that is about to press forward. I believe that there is about to be favor. Hallelujah. Upon the children of God. I listen to the radio. I, I listen because we drive so much. I listen to AM a lot. I listen to Glenn Beck. You can put a cross on me if you want and curse me. I, I listen to Glenn Beck. And I tell you what, I, I listen to a lot of them. And I tell you, they, they're telling us uh, we need to get prepared. We need to get prepared. Uh, earlier, how many people, my mama right now, she's still got FEMA uh, groceries all up in her cabinet from Hurricane Katrina and, and her Ike. And she's got all, I mean, she's got a cabinet full of, of groceries. She's got a closet in her bedroom full of groceries and water. My niece just won't let me in there. I, didn't, I know there's chocolate in there. She won't let me in there. Uh, she's got stuff stored up. She said, because I'm prepared. I'm prepared. How many times I looked at my mama and said, you're crazy. You're crazy. Hallelujah. But I tell you, I'm hearing it more and more. Prepare, prepare, because things are about to go out of this sky as far as the prices. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Once was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. The righteous, the praying righteous.
being a drug addict. Do not settle for your child being backslidden. Come on. Do not settle for poverty in your home. You have the power to do spiritual warfare. And the Bible says, I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. When my youngest son was in rebellion, I shared this with some of you. But when he was in rebellion, he come in one day, decided that he didn't like our rules. He left. He started walking the streets of old Dad. I'm like, what are you doing? I, I thought, I thought a UFO had come down and taken him and dropped some kind of aid. Because he was not acting like the young man I knew and had raised. He ran off. Started hanging with a crowd that was always into drugs and living with his girlfriend. Come on. I thought, God, what is that? This is not right. My life was upside down. One night, a Sunday night, after a move of God, we didn't even get home and all hell broke loose. Come on, somebody. By the time I got home, I didn't have enough strength to get to my bedroom. I laid on the living room floor and I wept. And I cried and I said, God, this is a dream. I've never dealt with this before. And I said, God, you gotta wake us up. Yeah. Change this. And I was in my office one day. And I was sitting there and I was weeping and I was crying. Because he wouldn't tell us where he lived. He didn't want us to know anything about his life anymore. I'm sitting there and I'm weeping and crying in the office. And all of a sudden, a lady from the church walks into the office. And I see her coming, so I start patting my tears. And I put on that church space. I took a deep breath and I thought, okay, be strong. She walked in and talked for just a couple of minutes. Started to walk out and she stopped and turned to me and she said, Pastor Connie, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Everything's good. It's cool. She walks out. As soon as she walked out of the door, I broke and I began to cry. I said, God, it's not okay. And all of a sudden, my door opened again and here she comes. I didn't have time to wipe my tears away. She said, are you okay? I'm like, I would have been, but you had to come back. <laughs> <laughs> and I began to weep. Come on. Even the strong ones need a shoulder every once in a while. And I got up from my chair and I grabbed her like I never grabbed anybody in a congregation or anyone I've ever ministered to before.